When a pediatric heart surgeon goes to work, we hold a life in our hands, literally. It's a privilege and a huge responsibility. I'm Glenn Van Arsdale, head of babies and children's heart surgery at SickKids. One of my jobs is to take developing surgeons and get them so that they can do just that safely. Now, to illustrate how complex that is, I might ask a question. Do we have any amateur musicians in the audience? Any volunteers to come up and play this piece of music? Prokofiev's second violin concerto. Well, let me show you the musical equivalent in congenital heart surgery. If you look up here at the screen on the left, this child or baby has transposition of the great arteries. The baby is born blue and will pass away soon unless we do surgery. The surgery we do is we switch this artery back here, and we take the one back here and move it up there. Now, if any of you have reasonable dexterity, I could actually help you do that. No big deal. There's a caveat. If you look a little more closely, there's a small one millimeter to two millimeter artery right there. And you can't see it on this frame, but there's another one over here. And you have to move that too. And it has to work. If it works, the baby goes home with their parents. If it doesn't, the baby has a heart attack and passes away. Well, I didn't see any takers to perform the music or perhaps to do this heart surgery. But luckily, to give you some idea again of how complex it is, Diane Kim is here from the Toronto Symphony Youth Orchestra. Diane. Awesome. Thank you. That's a master of her instrument and the piece. And that's what you want in your children's heart surgeon when that individual operates on your baby that has transposition. Now, when I was in high school, music was my life. I played three instruments and dabbled in others and was quite serious about music. I chose medicine, but what music taught me was how to learn. Diane's been playing the violin for 11 years. She's been working on that piece since the middle of the summer, two to three hours a day. If you do the math, that's about 250 hours on top of somebody who's already a gifted musician. I guarantee you she didn't sit down and play that piece from beginning to end. She broke it into components, practice a measure or two, a phrase, and strung it together. Well, this is how we can do that now. This is a 3D printer printing a heart. And like all innovation, I have a collaborator and that's Shi Jun Yu here. Shi Jun is a cardiac radiologist, and then since 2009, he's been printing hearts for me. Through a grant from the Ministry of Innovation and Technology, we were able to purchase an early 3D printer. 
And he printed these porcelain models of complex hearts that I had a hard time figuring out how to fix. Sometimes I couldn't figure it out until I was in the operating room. With this technology, I was able to plan beforehand. Well, Shi Jun is a, one of these guys who thinks ahead. And when 2.0 version came out, and it turned out that you could print something soft, he said, I can't wait for a grant. I've got to buy that now. He dipped into his retirement fund, stuck the printer in his home, and printed this, a soft model of transposition of the great vessels. Why is that important? Well, here you can see we can now operate on this model. I learned to operate over the course of 14 years on patience. That would be like you listening to Diane learn to play that piece of music for 250 hours sitting in this room. What is your choice? Let me show you this in action. On the left, you have a 3D printed model, transposition of the great vessels. If you look up here at the front left screen, that's that one to two millimeter artery with the associated tissue that we take. My chief fellow, Christoph Holler, is sewing this coronary artery into the new position it must take. You don't hear the sound, but I'm coaching him, and it's a relaxed environment. In the right-hand screen, you can see the same thing. There's that coronary artery on a two-day-old baby. He's taking the stitch. In a minute, you'll see him do the same move on the aorta, practicing to make perfect, learning how to play Prokofiev's second violin concerto, the way musicians learn. Well, what does all this mean? It turns out that if you look at volume and outcomes, they're highly correlated. And sick kids, because of the health system in Ontario and Canada, does a massive volume. And our mortality for this type of operation, even for the most complex ones, is about 1.5%. When you look at North America as a whole, it's about 3%. And when you look at Europe, which includes a database of developing countries, it's about triple that amount. Are we better surgeons? I don't think so. Do we have more practice? Yes. And so here we are teaching a class of surgeons how to do children's heart surgery, giving them an opportunity to practice when if you make a mistake, it doesn't matter. This is Tom Spray, one of the deans of congenital heart surgery. He came up from Philadelphia to help us teach the course because he was so thrilled about this. This surgeon is from Iraq. How do we flatten the earth? 3D printing and teaching surgeons how to operate when it's okay to make a mistake. Here you can see demonstrated the differences and outcomes in different areas and we believe we can flatten this across the world in due time. So where are we going next? This applies to you in the room. Some of you are getting to the age where some of your valves in your heart may not work the way they should. Guess what? We have a solution coming. This is a computer-assisted designed valve. We cannot yet acquire real data and print it, but we're on our way. And in a few years, likely we'll be able to print your valve, give it to the surgeon, let the surgeon rehearse their repair, and then go in and play a beautiful piece of music as they repair your valve. Our innovation is not printing hearts. A lot of people have done that. The innovation is saying, let's print it in a way that surgeons can practice and rehearse and play Prokofiev's second violin concerto. That's sick kids versus broken hearts. That's sick kids impacting the world, helping surgeons globally play Prokofiev's second violin piano concerto, much like Diane Kim. Thank you very much.